team, we know that the batting was a problem. Um, how confident are you that, given South Africa's domestic structure and the lack of cricket, for instance, that, that, that you can fix it? Where do you go to fix the batting if, if domestic cricket isn't strong enough to you know, give us test players? It's a good question there, Telford. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, I, always, I always bank on experience. Um, I know we don't have that at the test level. Um, so my next best thing is, who do we have with experience in first class cricket back home? Um, is that the right solution? We don't know yet. Um, we've still got a few months before our next series. And we've only got a handful of four-day games at home before we leave to Australia. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's kind of the, the way that I'm going to word it going home. Um, it's a tough thing now because we guys have to learn the toughest format uh, without not a lot of experience heads around them, which is which is always something we were aware of because of the, the amount of guys we had retire uh, back to back. But again, those are the cards we've dealt with, and we've we've got to find a way to 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 try and ease the blow for us. Um, Coming to England, you're always going to be exposed to tough conditions if, if the weather's um, on the bowler side and if the wicket's a little bit sporty, you're always going to be exposed with their bowling attack. Um, you'll be exposed with any bowling attack. So yeah, that's a tough one, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for experience heads now um, from a first class point of view, guys that have really scored a lot of runs back home. Um, and, and yeah, trying to find means with, with, with that kind of thinking. I think lack of experience and the lack of exposure to test cricket, um, the lack of exposure to UK conditions with the ball swinging and nipping. Um, we were also <clears throat> exposed to the toughest batting conditions throughout the, the, this test, especially um, where the ball was nipping quite quite a lot. Um, up there with some of them, yeah, it was, it was up there with really tough conditions even for myself, and I've got relatively decent amount of experience. So I can only imagine how the guy who's only got one or two tests on his belt must feel. Um, but yeah, it, 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 was all, it was tough all around. Um, I, can't, I can't, can't remember the three things that you want me to put into place there, but I think the lack of experience and the lack of exposure to those kind of situations kind of work hand in hand. Looking back at having that period off, um, I reckon we could have cracked on with the third test and been home already. Um, so maybe that's something to look look into going forward. Um, I know they always like to have two tests and then a decent break and then play the last one, but bearing in mind the okay, you can't plan for the three-day test matches, which which actually happened. So you actually had essentially four days of recovery because you didn't play the rest of those tests. So. Yeah, it was, it was quite a long period, I thought, and I, th I honestly felt maybe four days or five days was enough, and then uh, we could have cracked on with the, with the third test. Um, yeah, uh, I guess that's something, something to look at going forward. Well, um, you said before this that it was like a World Cup final for you. Um, now that that's come and gone and you've had the series in Australia, I guess that must be shaping up as an entire World Cup final. <laughs> I think that was always going to be a big series going forward. Um, yeah, another tough series away from home uh, against Australia. It's, it's never easy going over there. Um, but yeah, it's another exciting chapter for us to, to experience and be exposed to. Um, again, we're working towards a common goal and that goal is hopefully next year, June. Um, but again, we need to 
put a lot of emphasis going forward into this next series. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be the series is going to be one big World Cup final, but it, every Test match is, is is something that you have to live and die for, basically. Um, so the three Test match series against Australia, every game is going to be huge. Um, it's big for us because. We've been playing good cricket and we've also been playing pretty average cricket as a, as a squad and we need to get that balance right as well. And that's yet another opportunity for us to try and correct <clears throat> correct our wrongs and trying to get our balance of cricket better going forward um, to make sure come, say, June, if we're in a very good position, that we can capitalise on on that one-off game. Um, yeah, those tests are big. We've got five massive tests before June. Uh, even our series against West Indies, you can't take that lightly. You still have to play a test match like it's your last. Um, yeah, I just need the guys to have that mentality going forward as well. I need to think like that as well going forward. I'm not saying they don't think like that, but I'm just saying from a conscious point of view, they, that's how you need to kind of approach every game going forward now. Has your opinion of the bad ball and this attacking approach changed? No, no, no comment, yeah. I said I'm not speaking about that. I actually thought they played relatively good test cricket. I didn't, I didn't think they played extraordinary cricket. I thought they played the correct tempo, and they, and when their tail was up, they were they were striking when they had to strike. But that's just general good awareness of test cricket. I didn't think it was out of the ordinary. They, when their tail was up, they they seeked a moment and they and they went for it. Um, so I didn't think they played ultra-aggressive cricket. I just think they played a really good tempo of cricket. Uh, something that you can manage and control when you're, when, when you're ahead of the game. Um, so I didn't see that, that B word at all um, coming through. Or um, Yeah, I just I, I really felt they controlled it well. And they, they played what the game des deserved at that point in time. Um, and this is throughout the whole series, uh, especially the second and third tests, obviously, which they played really good cricket in. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think they played pretty accurate test cricket going for, yeah, for the rest of the series. Cool. We're going to take the uh, last round of questions now, Junior. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask, Marco Gans is a pretty inexperienced guy at this level, but he's had a big impact on the games he's played, yeah. both with bat and ball. I just wondered what you've made of his performances this year. Yeah, massive talent. Um, also very young and experienced, but I think he's got a different mentality of the way he approaches the game, um, which is nice to, to have around. Um, when you say different mentality, what do you mean exactly? I, I, I would, well, just seeing the way he plays the game, he's got two bites at the cherry being all around it as well. So if the one discipline lets him down, he knows he can be, he can sort it out with the other discipline. Um, but I do think he approaches the game a little bit more with a positive mindset. Um, He's also got no, he's got no baggage, he's got no cobwebs in his, in his closet, so he's, he's, he's pretty raw and he's, he's never really been hurt or, or failed yet at a young age. Um, so he can play with that open mindset and positive mindset. Um, so yeah, it's, it's nice to have him around the change room and just listening to his views sometimes. He's very quiet in, in, in that space, but it's, yeah, he's got some interesting ideas sometimes, so, which, which is which can work for him very well. Um, but yeah, I think he's got a really open mindset when it comes to playing the game. Great, we'll back up to Phil Ocean. Uh, what can you tell us about the, the, the actual resources now, like Aiden has been dropped, Rossi obviously got injured, and, and the two that came in, I suppose it would be unfair to judge them on, on this test match, but, but who is kind of putting their hands up, and what's the future for Aiden and Rossi? Um, well, it's unfortunate Rossi got injured. Um, I'd like to think that he would have still had a crack in this test. Um, it's a tough one when the guys aren't getting numbers on, <laughs> on the board for you and you still have an, a good fighting spirit around that. Sooner or later your resources are going to be depleted and we're going to have, have to look elsewhere. Um, I think we did the right thing for this test match. We had to use our resources that we had. Um, something different, um, something new. <laughs> Maybe they come out and smash your eighty hundred. You, you don't know if you don't if you don't give them a try. Um, but um, yeah, I think Aiden's still got a bright future in Test cricket. He just needs to get numbers behind him, uh, behind his belt, and um, yeah, go back to the drawing board. Uh, he's still too young and too talented not to be playing this this level of cricket. And I know he 
<laughs> he's still very hungry to play this this format. Um, but it's about getting runs, and that's our currency as a batter. Is that your runs is what what speaks volumes for you. Um, so he has to get when he gets those opportunities to potentially play a four-day game or whatever the case is. He's, he's got to nail it like he's done in the past when he was left out and he went back home and he he nailed four-day cricket and he scored a he scored a lot of runs and uh, he got his opportunity again. But again, he's still too young, too talented not to be not to be playing in, in this level.